let's go on to a, a little bit of a tangent, so to speak. Not really a tangent, but basically, since Codata has released its 2022 measurements, we've been able to parse to a deeper depth because some of these things we had more significant digits, some of them swung by different signals, as Thad was talking about before. I think uh, was the electron swung by about four, uh, mass of the electron swung by about four and a half sigma, proton was about four sigma or so. Now we have these to a heck of a lot of digits. I think both of those are about 12 significant digits there. So only just a tiny, tiny little bit, but as our precision increased, uh, we were able to find much more interesting in forms that, at least for me personally, uh, gives increased confidence that we're going in the right direction as given the balance of the electron. Put something up here on the screen. Uh, but one of the other avenues as well, uh, and one of the reasons why we think we're really in the home stretch of kind of narrowing down where we're going, is because uh, just yesterday, uh, that found a very interesting solution for the weak mixing angle. So I think that's, was it W sub theta, something like that? Okay, so we have. Theta sub w. Oh, theta sub W, thank you. If it's wrong, I'll just put up a correction. The wonders of cinema. Right. So we have theta sub W. It ends up being like 0 0.223, and then. You're right. You're right. Because when you go to codata and put it up, you're going to see sine squared of the weak mixing angle. I think that better. Terrible theta. But okay, so it ends up being approximately about 0 0.223, and then our error comes in here and it was like 0.21 or something but these last two digits okay that's not a lo lot to work with but i think they may have extended another digit or so um but that found a very beautiful solution and when you break out uh this this is supposed to be equal to i believe it's one minus the mass of the W boson over the mass of the Z boson, and I believe that part, and that's all squared. That sounds right, right? Okay. So that means whatever answer we're going to propose, it's going to need to fit this type of balance. So we would be able to if this was correct for what the answer we're about to go over, then we should be able to hypothetically determine what these boundaries are if we found a good explanation to propose. So the answer are there that, that the last uh, there, 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 there were different things in there, but yes, it's a yes, yes, that is also very interesting. Um, so the interesting structure that that had found to help bridge this gap was, coincidentally, it was uh, sine h, hyperbolic sine, to the negative 1 of 1. That's pretty cool. It's coincidentally, seeing as how we kind of got here, sine h plays a very vital role in the construction of the overall model. So that's that's really cool in and of itself, in my opinion. So now, if we were to assume that this is true, okay, then we should be able to define via this ratio. If we were to assume there is something to that, we should be able to explore this right here if we actually have the ratio between them. Okay, so if we take what we discussed in the last video that I put out there, um, there's an interesting thing when you're exploring uh, the mass ratio of the Higgs to the mass ratio of the Planck mass. So using this similar construction, one of the things that one notices if you take the Planck mass, that's Planck, and you divide it by the mass 
of the Higgs according to recent measurements. And then you were to oh, that, put in the similar construction, we square that, we get out to about the magnitude of h bar. And about the magnitude of h bar for it to equal one joule. Yeah, you, you multiplied it by h bar, right? Yes, I'm saying it approximately there. So it should be multiplied. Yep. So we'll do this squiggle there. That should be the squiggle. Okay. Joule second. Let me clarify as I'm a savage wiping with my hand. Okay. So. Second, so the D. Oh, I also can't spell. You can tell I've spent far too much time on a computer. But I noticed that, and I'm like, well, what if I were to assume it was one? Now, it might seem like a crazy thing, and I agree, unless there's a reason to do a crazy thing. Because the interesting thing is if we actually look out at the mass of the Higgs, if we put it in GeV, we only know about the first three significant digits, and it's about 125 GeV. From there, our measurements, some of them have been down to about 124 and a half, up to about 126 and a half. But it's, it's hitting right around 125 GeV and probably on the lower half with recent measurements. So I'm like, all right, let's entertain an idea. What if this massive coincidence, so to speak, was maybe a little bit more than a coincidence? So what we, I did is we just take this, we set it equal to one joule second if you include the dimensions. And then if we set that equal to this expression here, what we end up doing is we have the Planck mass, but we want to solve for what the mass of the Higgs is. So we put down x, kilograms, we square the whole thing, we multiply it by h bar, and the answer we get is 125.37, I believe it's 56 in this construction here, if we were to lend credence to that, g, e, v, which does fall within the range of measurements there. There have been a couple that have been a little bit below, a little bit above, uh, but I believe there was even one maybe including 137-ish or 138, something like that, GEV. So not really a prediction, but going to propose it as a conjecture that maybe there is something to this Planck, Boson, and Joule thing going on here. Okay. So if we have that, next, if there were to be something from this hyperbolic sine to the negative 1 times 1 ratio between the mass of the W and the mass of the Z boson. And keep in mind, we're discussing dimensions of mass here because there's going to be something we're going to get into that I haven't fully intuited yet, but it may suggest other things, but we're working the dimension of mass. And I think that's important to before we stray even further off the farm, so to speak. But if we were to hold there was something to this, and we take that mass of the Higgs, so we have our mass of the Higgs, okay? And how do we go through this? Basically, I did a good bit, bit of searching, and I was operating with the initial digits that Codata had provided, and I'm like, all right, let's see how this holds, because whatever digits we're going to propose for these, it needs to hold to this ratio. So went within about one sigma, kind of extended a little bit there, extended a little bit there, until I found an answer that it had kept popping up, but I needed to make sure it was within the right mass ranges. So the correct number that, or what I would have to multiply this mass of the Higgs to get to, the mass of the Z boson. So I kind of looked between the two, but the best thing I was able to find for that, I'm going to need a lot more room. It's a messy handwriter. Do it over 
uh, I'll write it out first. So we got this interesting expression, which is two thirds log of two times log of pi. I saw that pop up. I'm like, oh, that's interesting, but let me let, let me find some other things there just because for me, I'm like, okay, maybe that does tell a story, but I was looking for maybe another part of a pattern or something, something that I recognize. And if you go into Wolfram Alpha, you can actually find alternative representations to rewrite this as something that might be more interesting. Let's make sure. Go to massive Z boson. So you can rewrite this expression as the mass of the Higgs times the square root of two thirds, which is an interesting number. And that's oh, di logarithm of negative one times the di logarithm of one minus pi, which I saw that, I'm like, huh. Yep. Oh, yep. Yeah. Uh, oh, thank you. It's the benefit of having wolf from Alpha. It'll close a lot of them for you. So, thank you. But, and we're going to claim, at least for here, that, well, to be fair, we need to do another part if we're actually going to follow an energy conversion. But for mass, this you can say that's equal, at least appropriate. We do need a second hand term there if we're going to express in GEV. Um, so I'm like, all right, well, that was cool, but does this hold? Will it be within our sigmas or at least a reasonable sigma for the relationship? So once we set this, then we find that the mass of the Z. Mass of the Z boson uh, is times are divided by. Because it goes for that. I believe it's this hyperbolic sine negative 1 to the 1 ends up holding for our ratio for the mass of the W boson. That might be divided. I'm sorry. I, I didn't write it all out beforehand. Oh, sorry. But, oh, I should probably actually just bring it all along. So, did I already pull this over? Or am I just making that up in my head? Oh, I forgot to show the people here. Okay, so I will say that now. So, the interesting thing is when I saw those two dialogue algorithms, I'm like, Ooh. Can you put a two underneath the LI for the second one and missed it? Oh, uh, yeah, oh. Right there. uh, two. Sorry. No worries. So I noticed that, oh, that means it's not a dialogue room. It's just a logarithm. Yeah. Okay. Well, Never mind. I was saying, I was saying that wrong. Yeah. So, but in this expression for the volume of the hyperbolic figure eight naught, we have an imaginary component. We have our brackets, we have our die logarithms, we have our imaginary golden ratio constructions there. And then let's go over here. And I'm like, huh. So we got some logarithmic bases. Maybe there's some twist going on. And again, just an initial interpretation. And then I didn't even know that the log of two was like how would how would I pronounce that? It's and because this is all square rooted there, and then it tends to Maybe some smoothness there because you got pi in there. We call it the polylog of order one. Polylog of order one. That oh, is the correct. Negative one. The polylog of order one of negative one. Yeah. Wow. Try yeah. saying that three times fast. <laughs> that's, that's quite the mouthful. So, and again, this is just a lot of these. Maybe they're just interesting coincidences. Maybe. There is actually something to this. Maybe there is actually some intuition we could gain for these connections. And again, this, we're going to need to follow 
precision measurements. And when you're smashing together hadrons, it's, it's, it's amazing that we can even get like the first three digits or so. So we're going to have to see where the measurements go with that. Um, the other interesting thing, maybe I should have stopped there. Did I stop it? Yeah, we'll stop there. Okay. All right. We'll show all the cr crazy things later.